a great deal is asked of our immune system. On one hand, it has to respond rapidly and violently to invaders, but at the same time uh, limits both the response and the collateral damage to the host. Anaphylactic shock, like when someone with a peanut allergy dropped dead after eating a peanut, is an example of an overactive immune response. The flip side is an underactive immune response, which can put you at risk for infection. Uh, if you suffer some severe trauma, for example, it's not enough to get to a level 1 trauma center. Death related to sepsis, blood infection, is still a major problem. And a major factor is the depression of our immune system uh, caused by the stress of the trauma. So what these researchers did was to try to stimulate immune function in trauma victims by injecting them with beta-glucan, a type of fiber found in yeast, uh, mostly car crash victims, but also gunshots and stab wounds. And not only did the beta-glucan group suffer less sepsis overall, they have five times fewer complications and no deaths, compared to nearly one in three dying in the control group. I've talked about the role of oral beta-glucans in the form of nutritional yeast to boost immune function in adults and children. But if it's so immunostimulatory, then might it increase inflammation, worsen allergies? Actually, dietary yeast may offer the best of both worlds, possessing both anti-inflammatory as well as antimicrobial activities. On one hand, activating the immune system to prevent infections. On the other hand, capable of reducing inflammatory reactions. Given their best-of-both-worlds nature, enhancing immune defense while simultaneously down-regulating inflammations, beta-glucans are suggested as a replacement for immunosuppressant drugs to treat inflammatory diseases like inflammatory bowel disease. Turns out that's a bad idea for Crohn's disease, since it can make things worse. Same with another disease called the hydradenitis suppurativa. But what about allergies like hay fever? Uh, they did a nasal provocation test with tree pollen, and then siphoned off some mucus. And those that had been taking beta-glucans had lower levels of some inflammatory compounds, or should I say inflammatory compounds. <clears throat> and based on just that, they suggested it might help people with hay fever, but you don't know until you put it to the test. A randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind study compared the effects of daily supplementation for a month with about a teaspoon of nutritional yeast worth of beta-glucans versus placebo on the physical and psychological health of self-described moderate uh, ragweed allergy sufferers. Uh, the ragweed family is one of the leading causes of hay fever, and give people a placebo and nothing much happens. But in the beta-glucan group, a significant drop in symptoms and symptom severity fewer runny noses, fewer itchy eyes, and fewer sleep problems. So no wonder less tension, depression, anger, fatigue, and confusion, and more vigor. So improved allergy symptoms, overall physical health, and emotional well-being with the beta-glucans found in a single teaspoon of nutritional yeast, uh, which would cost about 5 cents a day.